This video is a continuation of my Home Assistant 101 series, where we talk about the foundational stuff around getting started with Home Assistant. And in this video, we're setting up remote access to our Home Assistant instance. So stick around because we're going to get you ready to automate some boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs, my name is Jeff, and I am definitely not a security expert. I'm just a rando on YouTube sharing my Home Assistant journey. The purpose of this video is to get you started with remote access in Home Assistant, and to give you enough information that when you do have questions for a security expert, you'll know which questions you need to get answered. In this video, we're going to set up remote access to our new Home Assistant instance using DuckDNS and Let's Encrypt. We'll also discuss a couple of other options for remote access. And we'll set up IP band to give us a little bit more protection. And at the end of this video, I'll cover one of the integrations out there that could help give you more information about who's actually logging in to your Home Assistant instance. Like I mentioned in my recent video on Home Assistant alerts, this video will be accompanied by its own GitHub repo containing the config files we talk about in this video. And it is based on a new Home Assistant instance which as of recording this video is 2022.4.4. Okay, let's talk about setting up remote access. First off, I can't pass up this opportunity to remind you to use strong passwords and use different passwords for each of your devices and services you integrate into Home Assistant as much as possible. A big part of securing your smart home is all about mitigating risks that are introduced when companies take traditionally local only access devices and add the convenience to operate them when you're not standing next to those devices. Passwords are often involved in that process. So using different passwords means that if someone actually got access to your smart home using a compromised password, that key is only going to get them so far. In this video, I'm not going to get into whether or not opening your home assistant instance to the world is a good idea or not because answering that question is really based on how much risk you're willing to assume in exchange for the added convenience of remote access. But for those of you wanting remote access, let's get started. Adding remote access to Home Assistant is as simple as opening a port on your network router to allow the outside world to get to your Home Assistant instance. But we need to make sure that we can mitigate some of the risk that occurs when we do that and that's where an SSL cert comes in. An SSL cert essentially gives your Home Assistant instance a confidentiality clause with any device or service it communicates with. Meaning, as long as the SSL cert is valid, any communication with a device or service outside your network should be private, which is going to be important if you're going to be sharing sensitive information with your Home Assistant instance, like passwords to your smart home. Without an SSL cert, your communications could be heard by other services along the way. So while you could achieve remote access without an SSL cert, doing so wouldn't be smart. And for setting up remote access with SSL enabled, you have some options. The DuckDNS and Let's Encrypt combo might be the most common pattern for remote access in the Home Assistant community. Although honestly, I don't have actual data to back that statement up but based on my Google searches, it does appear to be the most popular option. And it would be for good reason. DuckDNS is free to set up, and it provides you the ability to add a domain name to your Home Assistant instance, something like slackerlabs.duckdns.org, which can provide an easy way to access your smart home without having to use an IP address. It's also a dynamic domain name service, or dynamic DNS, which just means it's built for servers whose IP address might change over time. And since most of us don't have static IP addresses for our home network, this is a good choice. And Let's Encrypt gives us the ability to create a free SSL cert for that domain name. There are some limitations with the free Let's Encrypt SSL cert, but the security provided by that cert is the same as the paid versions. And the reality is none of these limitations are going to impact us if all we're doing is setting up a cert for our Home Assistant instance. The only thing we really need to be concerned with using the Let's Encrypt SSL cert is that it requires renewal every 90 days. But Home Assistant can handle that for us. Home Assistant does have a built-in DuckDNS integration, but we're going to skip this one and use the DuckDNS add-on from the Home Assistant add-on store. Of course, that means that this guide is for those of you running the supervised version of Home Assistant. 
If you're not, you may still be able to use this add-on. It is just a Docker container itself after all, but we're going to stick with the easy version for this guide and use the add-on store. Installation is as easy as heading to the add-on store under settings, clicking the add button, picking the DuckDNS add-on, and then hitting the install button. Then while that installs, just sit back and enjoy the view. When it's finished installation, we're going to head to the configuration and do a little copy paste. But at this point, we're going to need some details from DuckDNS. So let's open up our browser and head to duckdns.org. You'll need to create an account or use one of the services listed to log in. But once you have a DuckDNS account and you're logged in, you should see this screen. What we need to do now is create a domain to use with DuckDNS. This can be whatever you want, as long as it's not already in use at DuckDNS. For this example, I used Slacker Labs demos and then hit add domain. What this does is takes whatever you entered and creates a subdomain on the duckdns.org domain, which means it'll take whatever name you put in there and add dot duckdns.org. If you do this part from your home, it should link your home's external IP address, which is probably what you want. But if you did this step somewhere else, then you may need to update this IP so it points to your instance of Home Assistant. After that, we just need to grab our DuckDNS token. This one has already been destroyed by the time you're seeing this video, but you can just copy yours and then add it to your add-on configuration. In the configuration options for the add-on, we just enter our domain name that we created. So in this case, slackerlabsdemos.duckdns.org. Then under Let's Encrypt, change this false to true to accept the terms of the Let's Encrypt cert. Otherwise, you won't get an SSL cert when you start this add-on. And for token, put in your DuckDNS token so this add-on can make sure that your IP stays up to date. Then hit Save. Then we'll hit Start. Next, it's a good idea to flip over to the log and make sure everything is good. But it's pretty clear I have a problem. And it was because I forgot to set the terms of Let's Encrypt to true. So let's fix that and then hit save. And we'll have to restart the add-on since we made changes. Now back over in the log, things look much better. And once it creates the cert, then we are good. Next, we need to tell Home Assistant to use the cert we just created. So head over in the documentation and copy the two lines under the HTTP section. If you're running the supervised version of Home Assistant, these should be the path to your cert files. If you have a different setup, you may need to use different paths. So just verify that if you're not using the supervised version. Once you have those copied, we now need to drop these into our configuration.yaml file for Home Assistant. Over there, you should have an HTTP section. And under that, we'll paste them there, remembering to indent both lines under that HTTP colon heading. If you don't already have an HTTP colon section, you can just create one. Then once you've got your new lines pointing to your certs into the configuration.yaml, it's time to save and restart. While that's restarting, we need to update our network router. How you do this is going to be specific to the router you use with your internet service. But what you're looking for is port forwarding because we need to forward the external port 443 to the internal port 8123 on our Home Assistant instance. Because I already have port 443 forwarded to my production Home Assistant system, I had to use 4443 for this test, which also means that you could use a different port other than 443 if you so choose. For this though, if you don't use port 443, then you're going to have to add colon and the port number to your domain every time you want to access your Home Assistant instance from outside your network. I use Arrow, and this is what the configuration looks like inside my app. In your case, you would just replace the 4443 with whatever port you want to use. And once Home Assistant comes back up, we can test to make sure everything is working. And since we changed our Home Assistant setup, this isn't going to be like a normal reboot because Home Assistant is now going to expect us to be using an SSL cert. And your browser won't know that we need to be using HTTPS instead of HTTP. So you'll need to modify your URL so it starts with the HTTPS colon instead of just HTTP colon. And since we're using the local IP, we're still going to need to use the port 8123. 
If your SSL cert is working, you may get a message that says your connection is not private. And that's because we made our cert for the domain slackerlabsdemos.docdns.org. And here we're using the IP. So this is just a warning that the cert doesn't match the domain we used to access this site. And if this was a website you didn't control, run from this error because this may mean someone is trying to impersonate whatever domain you're trying to get to. In your browser, you should be able to just click something like Show Details and then tell it you want to visit this website. In Safari on my Mac, I have to use our computer password to accept the risk and bypass the warning before Safari lets me access this site. Then, once we get past that, we can log into our Home Assistant instance. And if you get the padlock in the URL, that tells you that the cert is installed and linked to Home Assistant. So, now comes the real test. Open a new tab in your browser, type in https colon slash slash and your DuckDNS domain name. If you're using port 443, you don't need to put colon 443 at the end. Since I forwarded my port 4443 to my test instance, then I have to include that port at the end of this URL. And then just hit enter. And there we are. We can now access our Home Assistant instance using our new DuckDNS domain name. But DuckDNS isn't the only option. Cloudflare is a BYOD or bring your own device solution. And if you're like me saving domain names for a rainy day, Cloudflare could be a good option. But it does require you to already have a registered domain name. And that does cost money based on which name you choose, which is probably going to be around $10 or $15 a year. After that, Cloudflare can provide an SSL cert that lasts 15 years. Back when renewing a Let's Encrypt SSL cert was a manual process, I moved to Cloudflare for that specific reason. These days, I stick around because of the amount of information I can get from Cloudflare about what's trying to access my Home Assistant instance. There's an older post over on my blog about how I set up Cloudflare with Home Assistant. And mostly Chris did a video not too long ago walking through the process as well. I'll leave links to both of those in the description of this video. But if all of this sounds like too much work, there is an easier option. If you have no interest in setting up a domain name, managing network ports, or even updating your configuration files on your Home Assistant instance, Nabucasa provides an easy button method for setting up remote access. Of course, that kind of convenience always comes with a cost, and in this case it's a small monthly or yearly subscription fee. At the time of this video, that monthly subscription fee was $6.50, or you could go with the yearly option for $65. But one of the benefits you get in exchange for that money is a domain name and an SSL cert which allows you to access your Home Assistant instance from anywhere in the world. The domain name isn't going to be something that you can easily type from memory though, but it can be used to connect other services and the mobile app to your Home Assistant instance. Plus, they don't host any of your data in the cloud. They simply provide a secure pass-through to your Home Assistant instance. And all without having to set up domain names, opening ports on your network router, renewing SSL certs, or even modifying your configuration.yaml files. Now, adding an SSL cert is going to impact your local access as well, especially if you're using the IP address to access your Home Assistant instance when you're on your local network which can make your browser or other devices accessing Home Assistant in that way complain because the SSL cert doesn't match the address you're using to access Home Assistant. One way to get around this is to use a proxy like the one provided by the Nginx SSL proxy add-on. This allows internal traffic to use a non-SSL connection to your Home Assistant instance while maintaining the ability of external traffic to use the SSL cert. But I think we'll save that one for a future video. However, if you're running into local access issues after setting up that SSL cert, or you just want to have your internal traffic not use the SSL cert, check out that Nginx SSL proxy add-on in the add-on store. But an SSL cert only allows the communication between Home Assistant and an outside device to remain private. It doesn't prevent someone from trying multiple passwords. One of the security options you should consider enabling is IP ban. This feature can ban or block an IP address that has attempted to log in with consecutive bad passwords. But when enabled, Home Assistant is indiscriminate when it comes time to drop the ban hammer, 
Which means, whether it's a script kitty trying to log in or your kid that forgot his password, they're both going to get the same treatment. To enable IPBand though, we need to make some changes to our configuration.yaml file. Here, under the HTTP colon, we need to add the following lines. IP underscore ban underscore enabled colon space true and login underscore attempts underscore threshold colon five. Here, the five means after five failed login attempts from an IP address, that IP address will be barred from accessing your Home Assistant instance. When that happens, you'll get an entry in your IP underscore bans dot YAML file that notes the time it was banned as well as the IP. So if you ever need to remove the ban, you can just come into this IP bans YAML file and remove the entries, then save the file and restart Home Assistant. When Home Assistant comes back up, that IP will once again be allowed to make it all the way to your Home Assistant instance. Unfortunately, Home Assistant doesn't have a lot of tools for handling intrusion detection and not a lot of warning that someone is actively attempting to log into your Home Assistant instance other than that IP ban option. But if you want a little more information about who's logging into your Home Assistant instance or specifically where they're logging in from, check out the Home Assistant Community Store or Hacks Integration Authenticated. I played around with this integration for a bit before ultimately turning it off because it was really more than I needed. But it does notify you of each login to your Home Assistant instance, and if possible, includes the location of where that login originated. Although, based on what I saw, I wouldn't trust the geolocation blindly. But it is handy for at least tracking the times and users logging in, and it will log each login. For example, here are some of the entries it collected from the time that it was running. You get the IP and where the integration thought the IP was originating from. It's an easy integration to set up and it can provide notifications to your notification panel if you find those helpful or want real-time notifications of new logins. Plus, you can ignore certain IPs to cut down on the noise. And I think that's it for this video. I hope this gave you enough information to get started with remote access in Home Assistant. As always, if you have questions or concerns, let me know in the comments, or you can find me in Discord or on Twitter at the Jeffrey Stone. If you want to support Slacker Labs and the mission to help you automate the boring stuff, you can find links to the official Slacker Labs t-shirt store, as well as affiliate links, and even a link to buy me a coffee, if you so choose, in the description of this video. You can also just let me know that you found value in this video by hitting that like button, and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already for more smart home content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff. <laughs> <laughs>